Bigfoot to themselves. Because here's the thing. Bigfoot, Bigfoots are the most advanced species on this planet. They are actually up fighting the gray aliens in space right now. They're defending us. They are the world's defenders. Bigfoots in space. Oh, my God. That's that's the next movie. Please Get that to the people that did Sharknado. <laughs> don't give this current president any <laughs> other <laughs> ideas. Bigfoot in space. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can okay. also get into how um, I think we're funneling money into Space Force now. For real. As we should be. Only if it is actually going to outfit Bigfoots in space. I mean, to fight that's the what grays. I assume it's going for. Although, why are we fighting grays? Because aren't we supposed to be fighting the reptilians? Uh, both. Both are bad. Oh, bo- both. I thought it was just the reptilians were assholes. Um, I mean, they're also assholes, but grays are also not the best. The okay. more... So here, here's what I've gotten okay. from all Wait, the Okay, wait, no, races. stop. <laughs> Why don't we talk about the topic at hand? So, anyway, I'm sorry I just started talking about Bigfoot, but I just had, I, you know, <clears throat> it was Bigfoot. I couldn't help myself, kind of like Megalodon or Giant Squid, which actually exists. Well, lots, I mean, the Giant Squid do. Um, Bigfoot has that effect on lots of ladies oh, where yeah. they can't help themselves. Mm-hmm. For that. Bigfoot. Schlong. All right, so today's topic is Ouija boards. There's no segue in the world that's going to work for it. Oh, unless we're talking to a dead Bigfoot. There you go. And um, So today's topic, if you're interested in talking to a dead Bigfoot, is actually Ouija boards. Oh, should I do the intro? Yeah, you probably should have done that like five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your host, jc and the wonderful co-host kiki heidi ho we can just like splice that oh yeah we can just put this at the other end yeah just like we could put it at the back end oh yeah but jenga or the front end which way would you like to go i mean depends and i'm not really making fun of southerners i again i just want to let everybody know i did live in north carolina for 20 years before moving back up to pa so um I feel as though I can make fun of you guys as much as I fucking want to. I feel as though I can make fun of anyone as much as I want to because I'm me. (laughs) But I do absolutely adore Greensboro. And I'm very sorry that I had to leave you. I'm not. I am. In a way. Although Philadelphia is much, much cooler. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, we have pierogies up here pierogies are something that no one should live without yeah okay that's like and we can get into that when i start my cooking enchanted eats yeah i'm gonna make some fucking magic pierogies okay all pierogies are magical all right so ouija boards let's let's just talk about uh the fact the factual part of ouija boards really quickly all right uh the simple scientific explanation it's something we call the idiomotor effect. And it's basically your subconscious mind talking to yourself through your body. So um, there was an interesting experiment done, and it's a fairly new experiment. They asked people a series of questions and asked for honest answers to these series of questions. These people answered them 50% of the time they were honest. But when they asked them the same questions using a Ouija board like 65 percent of the time they answered honestly almost as if they allowed their subconscious mind to take over and answer the questions that they already knew the answers to the first time around except that you're more apt to maybe tell some white lies or fibs because there's no intercessor it's weird how there's like this intercessor comes in a la the ouija board and now suddenly oh, like the answer is this or that or whatever. And it's it's, it's basically your subconscious mind uh, playing a little trick on you. My thing is, though, that that is exactly scientifically what happens when you, when you are using a Ouija board with someone else. But what happens when you get a group of people who are psychic? And I mean, I'm not talking about these fake fakos here. I'm talking about like real honest to goodness psychic people. What happens when they get in the room and they start using the Ouija board and they start asking questions 
is it possible to open a portal with this artifice? What's your thoughts on that? Uh, no. Uh, but yes. So when you have uh, legitimate people who are legitimately psychic using this, I am sure that they are able... It, it's You're talking to something. You have three people at a four-seated table, and that four seat's also occupied. And it's using the Ouija to communicate with you guys. And Ouija boards can be anything. Like, people are always like, oh, you know, it's just a board game by Hasbro. Yes, but you're using this tool to communicate with something. There's, there's a lot of influence, because you're never supposed to do it by yourself. You're always supposed to have at least one other person. The more people, the better. Okay, hold up. I want to tell you why it was made like that. It was like the original dating app. It was oh, supposed God. to be one woman and one man. Swear to God. <laughs> so, well, yeah. you know, so it's like before Tinder. Tinder. It's Tinder for the afterlife, dude. Before Tinder, people, you know, they had to do what they had to do. That's what I'll say. But yeah, so you have a couple people together using the Ouija board. You ask questions supposedly there's a ghost or some kind of paranormal event that is happening to give you answers i don't even think that everyone needs to be psychic i don't think anyone needs to be psychic i think a real ouija board holds like things recognize what it is and are drawn to them so i think you'll still get answers I'm just gonna, oh yes, we're all going to die today, yep, yep, oh, I go to B, O, O, B, S, uh, boobs, ghost wants to talk about boobs, guys, let's, let's do it, it whew. if this was the original dating app, oh my gosh, idea, okay, strip Ouija board, yeah, uh, you use the Ouija board, you ask the ghost, what article of clothing should she take off? All of it. Wow, it's weird how quick it spelled that out, too. Just all of it. Huh. Crazy. Um, but, you you know, you heard the spirits, so better do it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Strip Ouija. <laughs> never, never thought, uh, never thought of that before. You know someone's played it, though. You know somebody's Absolutely. definitely done that. To wrap up that earlier question, so you're not, you don't believe that Ouija boards can be used as a means to gain a portal to another realm? Or are you just saying that it's not the Ouija board specifically, it's it's just a tool? It yeah. Can, it can be other things as well, and that's why we need to be careful, because when, we, when we're using that tool, we're kind of opening ourselves up to... Uh, so that's how I feel about it. We're, we're kind of opening ourselves up to um, the other side or another dimension, if I'm speaking scientifically. Yeah, so think about it like this. You live in an apartment complex. In this apartment complex, there, there's no communication. Why, for whatever reason, uh, we're applying horror movie logic, and uh, there's no communication. So you're able to use this hammer to use Morse code to communicate with your neighbor. However... If you use the hammer improperly, you're going to make a hole in your wall that will allow your neighbor into your home whenever they want to, until you're able to repair that wall, after hopefully pushing your neighbor out. And your neighbor is not always the most well-intentioned person. Because let's say, you know, you're walking down a hallway and you're like, oh, it's a little girl neighbor. But really, the little girl yeah, she's in that house. She's in the apartment, but there's also a nine foot red guy whose name is Beloba Bob and has horns on it. I'm describing a demon. Um, but yeah, he's the one that's going to come into your place and start messing with your shit. You have to use the tool correctly for its intended purpose, and you have to make sure you're aware of all the rules with it. And when you come to paranormal stuff, Rules are very important, and your belief in the way the rules work is also very important. Yeah. Okay, so... It can, it can create a portal if used incorrectly. If you're using it right, you're just doing... You're just communicating with something, and then you send them away. 
Which, if you use a Ouija board in your house, you're dumb. That's like rule number one. Don't use it where you live. Don't I use it where anyone lives. Thoroughly confused because is it fake or not fake? No, it's so it's not fake. It, a, oh, Ouija okay. board, a Ouija board's a tool okay. to communicate. I don't believe that every time it's used, you're create, you're actually using it. I think there's a lot of human error and human bias that goes into it. So I'm very skeptical about when somebody's like, oh, I was using a Ouija board and the Ouija board said I should uh, wear red shoes for every Thursday for the rest of my life. Why the Ouija board told you that? I don't know. Probably one of your friends messing with you. See, I, I get... I get the actual science behind it as far as it being our subconscious minds. Yeah. So I think where you're getting, what you're saying is when you're talking about using it correctly versus incorrectly, and and I'm using this as a personal experience, is that if you use anything at all in a negative way or you're trying to get something specific to come through... Your subconscious mind is then acting on it. And honestly, let's face it, we don't really know how our minds work. There's a whole part of our brains that we don't even quite understand the science behind what's happening inside our head. And and I think the brain and the mind are two different things. So the you know, you talk about the power of positivity, there's also the power of negativity as well. My experience with a Ouija board, where I was not directly involved, but I was in the same house as it was going on was when this group of psychics was doing it. And I say they were they were definitely psychics. At least three of them were. There was a couple of fakes in there. They're using the Ouija board to speak to a ghost in the house. And what comes through is not the ghost that they're looking for. It is actually something more violent. And then you have this whole other haunting happening, which I felt was a result of them getting together and using the power of their minds to open a portal to another dimension and bring something out that was really terrible, which is why I don't use Ouija boards, not even for fun, which is basically what they were supposed to be for in the first place. So yeah, when you use a Ouija board, you're requesting audience with, let's say you want to speak to a relative who passed away recently and you want some closure because whatever reason you might ask for that person but you never know who's actually going to pick up the other line so and if there is a stronger spirit or entity there nearby they're going to pick up that line because a ouija board can be used to create a a door into our realm they want to use that so that they can wreak havoc. They can do what they want in our realm and mess with us. Sometimes you get the person you request it or the spirit that you request it and you can have a really nice conversation with them and get the closure. Unfortunately, I feel those stories and maybe it's just because I'm into the creepy, spooky shit. I hear about the, the bad ones. I was in three... I think I did three investigations on places where Ouija boards were used. And it went from, oh, things, you know, things sometimes move. And sometimes we get cold spots to doors are slamming all the time. We have dishware just thrown. We had like it immediately intensifies. Oh, see, that's a very good point, too. People coming together who are like minded, meaning that you might actually have skills you know in psychic abilities Mm -hmm. and if you get enough of those people together what if the ouija board isn't even the thing like what if you're creating a poltergeist between you know the three or four of you or how many is there i mean that's what that's possible too i feel that might be a little more rare my main thing is like teenage idiots who uh are just doing a a spooky thing to do on halloween night oh let's pull out the ouija board they're not coming together for anything like they're they're probably not psychics they're probably just normal people and they're going to intensify a maybe very light situation by bringing in because they're not following the rules they're not gonna like make sure that they say goodbye they request audience with their guardian spirit like they're not doing any of that shit they're simply, uh, let's pull out the Ouija board. Hey, spooky things. 
why are you so spooky? And on rare occasions, on those occasions, like it's, you can easily intensify a, maybe a haunting that are an unhaunted house. You're bringing something in there that's then going to fuck with you and your family. You're talking about like teenagers is also the other side of that, which is teenagers playing really shitty pranks on each other or you know using the Ouija board to bully people and basically scaring them and I've seen that happen one time when I was a kid and um you know I knew they were full of shit and I put a stop to it you shouldn't really bully people in general but it's a PSA I will say however I do appreciate the older brothers that when their younger sister's having a sleepover and they decide to start playing the Ouija, the older brother goes into the basement and pops all the lights off in the house. That I is do, such a dick move. I do appreciate that because they're not technically interfering with the Ouija board. They're just, that. that's funny. I do like little pranks like that. But if you're at the table with the Ouija and you're like, mm, I'm going to move it over here. Oh, hi, guys. Yeah, we're mo- we're going this way today. Like, um, Julia is so cool. And yeah, you know, that's that's dumb. You're just misusing a tool. Yeah. Or like, you know, oh, Lillian should just go kill herself. You know, that's to be terrible. fair, though, Lillian, did you see her hair? She should go kill herself. Oh I'd rather God. her die than have that hair. Mm, just saying. Fashion advice from JC. <laughs> <laughs> On a made up character. <laughs> Not. But yeah, helpful. you know, never, never. That's once again misusing the tool. Use it for what it's made to be used for. So our consensus is that there is the scientific evidence that actually proves that it's a bunch of bullshit, but also don't use it. <laughs> Because it's real. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, it's... So, here's the thing. (laughs) I believe in in ghosts, demons, and other such paranormal entities. And I believe that the Ouija board can be used to communicate with those (laughs) entities. So, I think the Ouija board does work for what it's supposed to be used for. I think that there are entities that, if it's not used correct can take advantage of situations and come in and fuck with us. I also think, and I know, that there's the science being, like you were saying, there's the the subconscious thought where you're going to talk to your grandmother. If if you want to use a Ouija to communicate with a, a relative that recently died, you could really, truly only be talking to yourself and whoever else is in that room. Like, physically there that you see uh so it could be like you uh another family member and a close friend and you guys might have a really good conversation with what you believe is the spirit of your grandmother but truly it's just the subconscious thought where this grandmother i'm I'm on that kick she made sandwiches every day and she so like Maybe the word sandwiches show up because all three of you, when you think of her, you think of sandwiches. When you think of her, you think of this. So that's a very good way of putting it where and this is where we talk about the power of the mind itself. So if you're working with three people who are very like minded, you're all trying to communicate with a very specific person. You may kind of create your own closure using the Ouija board for its intended purpose, which was to, you know supposedly talk to the dead yeah without actually talking to the dead because i think when you use a ouija board 99.999 percent of the time there's nothing there it's not working it because there's there's no you didn't do the rituals ahead of time you didn't you know you just pull it out of a fucking game box and you just have whatever there's a very rare amount of times when people use a ouija board and it actually works where you're actually talking to a spirit. And in a very rare set of those circumstances, those spirits come through the Ouija board or through the portal that the Ouija board creates and begin to haunt the house. And most of the time, those spirits are negative and deceitful because that's probably how they were able to communicate with you. God damn, the movie The Exorcist. Captain Howdy is the person she... Could, is, the, is the name of the demon that uh, possessed... 
Regina? Was that her name in The Exorcist? You never saw The Exorcist, did of, you? Uh, okay, I so was alive when The Exorcist came out, as opposed to you, who I don't think were alive when The Exorcist came oh, out. Oh, definitely not. No, no. I'm so happy I missed that fashion craze, because... When, I love watching movies from, like, the late 70s and early 80s where you're just... Why were they wearing that? Why? Hey, don't knock 70s fashion, okay? Uh, too late, R.A. did. <sighs> <laughs> All right, let's just talk about some of the um, crazy Ouija board superstitions that are out there on the internet just for a minute. I'm not going to read them all because they're Ooh, ridiculous. Oh, I'm so but, excited for this. But you can make fun of these, okay? Laugh. Let's, 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 let's make fun of these. Okay. Avoid playing with the Ouija board if you aren't feeling well because you'll become possessed. Oh, um, maybe, but doubtful. Uh, here's what you, cause when you are sick, you are mentally weaker. And I, I believe a lot of that is like your own personal willpower versus the willpower of the other thing. So maybe I see where they're going with it, but I doubt it. Don't ask when you're going to die. There's actually a website for that anyway, so there's no point. Well, there, there is the website, and here's the thing. Uh, I don't need to ask that because I know I'm never going to die because I am immortal. Uh, but also, you guys shouldn't, shouldn't ask that question because, and hear me out, uh, it's a dumb question to ask. Why would you want to know that? People always, why would, that, that's one of those questions where I'm like, why would you ever ask somebody that? Why would you ever want to know when you're going to die? Using the Ouija board will allow the devil to enter the world. Listen, Lucifer's already here, man. It's okay. Just welcome him into your heart. It'll be all right. Might I suggest that uh, Lucifer himself does not exist? Oh. Uh, might I suggest that the Ouija board does not allow the devil. It could allow a devil or a demon See, I go more of the devil is a type of, of entity and demon is a type of entity. And then you can start breaking it down and blah, 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 blah. There is no the devil. Well, there probably is like a king devil, but it's not Lucifer from the Bible. Unless it is, and I might be wrong, because who knows? Um, excuse you. All right, because the devil's real and he lives in New Jersey. Uh, once again, New Jersey doesn't exist. So... If he is real and he lives in New Jersey, that would mean he does not exist because New Jersey doesn't exist. Except for all of our fantastic fans out in New Jersey area, you guys are wonderful. Stay safe. We got winter coming, you know. If you burn the Ouija board, it screams. Um, well, the Ouija board doesn't have a mouth, so how does it scream? That is, that is my question. Failure to properly dispose of the Ouija board will cause spirits to haunt you. Uh, doubt it. Because that's... I mean, unless it's like a recyclable material and you have a hippie ghost nearby and you put it in the trash and you didn't recycle it, I could see a hippie ghost being like, yo, man. Plus it's wood. Shouldn't, shouldn't it just be burned? Oh, but wait, it screams. I don't think it screams. I don't think so. I've never heard one scream. And I Let's set one on fire to make zero. sure. Experiment. Um, Dude, no. We're real scientists and we got to get this shit done. Okay. We're going to get some Ouija boards. We're going to set them on fire in the backyard. Okay. It'll be fine. And then we're going to do the actual experiment. I feel, and this is just me here, that that is a heavy cost <laughs> to buy. So what we need is for you guys to please um, go to our Patreon so you can give us some money so that we can buy some Ouija boards so <laughs> we can set them on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll have a Ouija board bonfire where we just burn a bunch of Ouija boards. And if any of them scream, we will die within a couple days and you get good content of getting to see us die within a couple days. It's a win-win for everyone. I die, you get to see me die. Who doesn't want to see that? Because we are that hardcore spooky on this podcast. We'll die for spooky science. All right, that's all I got for, for Ouija board. I'm still confused. So I don't use the Ouija board? No, don't don't bad. use a Ouija board. Okay. That's that's the real uh, and and uh, our uh, headline is don't don't use a Ouija board unless you are a Ouija no, board. No, no, there's no one that unless. Like, oh, there putting... is. There is unless you're a, a professional Ouija boardologist. 
you're, okay, you're I not really, allowed to use it. I really feel like at some point, even though I honestly don't use Facebook very much anymore, at some point there's going to be a Facebook algorithm that will allow me to, for a small price, become a Ouija boardologist. You know what I'm talking about, right? Ugh. So cute, though. Which one? Yours. Oh, the black dog. Yeah. yeah. Big black dog. Yeah. Got big black dog. She's our mascot. Also, my cat is our mascot, too. But anyway. We have multiple mascots, and we are a mascot. And we are of... a mascot ourselves for the wonderful band, Forget the Whale. But don't forget the whale. Remember yeah. the whale. I feel like I feel like that's a bad name. Forget the whale. No, but what's their name? Forget, forget the, the whale. But what's the band name? <laughs> no. Look, I already forgot about the whale. I don't know what whale you're talking about. Ooh, I could really quickly go over that the name is not French or German. Oh, what is the name, Ouija? The inventor, Elijah Bond, claimed that he and his sister-in-law, so-called strong medium, sat down with the board and um, figured out what to name it. And that the planchette actually spelled out its own name so that it chose its own name and then defined itself as good luck. Fascinating. Yeah, if I was a demon, that's exactly what I would say the door to the underworld is, too. It's good luck. There are some other podcasts that have been out for a long time that have done great research on just Ouija boards, and you should go listen to them anyway. We're just... Doing a PSA. Neither one of us really enjoys Ouija boards that much, so... Yeah, so we wanted to talk about it and tell you guys not to use Ouija boards, because they're bad for business. It used to outsell Monopoly, though. Like, for real. You know what? I think more hauntings have happened due to Monopoly than Ouija boards. (laughs) Because more people have definitely died during games of Monopoly. Families have been ruined. Relationships ended. Friendships torn apart. Tables flipped. Yes. All of it. Fights. I I mean, uh, all over that that game. Fucking Monopoly. I love it. I usually win. So my husband usually wins. He's an asshole when it comes to Monopoly. He just has the best luck for the rolls, which, by the way, rolling of dice, not one of my strong points, as my D&T character can tell you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am the quintessential person who rolls a one on the very first go. And just as they're like, well, fuck me, I'm getting eaten by a dragon today. Or don't fuck me because I'm getting eaten by a dragon today. I feel like if I knew my plans for that day involved getting eaten by a dragon, I'd want to get fucked. Yeah, like one last time. Yeah. You know, just one really good one. Just get it in. No, not even that good. What? Sad. Oh my God. sad one. Just so I like walk willingly into the dragon's mouth. (laughs) That's what I'd want. All those people that are like, oh, if I'm on a plane and it's going down, I'm grabbing the nearest person and going to town on them. Well, first off, you just described a rape. Uh, secondly, like, do something meaningful, like trying to figure out a solution to the problem you're in. We're out of here. Stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. Stay spooky. Stay spooky.